I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and here with me is Zaldi, costume designer for the one and only RuPaul on RuPaul's Drag Race. And Hello. So, uh, you know, Zaldi, this season 13 of Drag Race was actually, it, it was longer than a lot of seasons have been uh, in recent history. Uh, and, you know, you're also, in addition to this, Ru is now doing international editions of the show. Yeah. So with this increased episode count for you, how has how have you had to adjust your working strategies? Uh, well, basically, I mean, all we have to do is have to adjust the schedule, you know. And um, you know, when I knew about all of like Australia coming up, and I, you know, the UK coming up, and all the other extras that were also possibly coming up, I was just like, you know, we have to really work now in major. I mean, we always work like almost a year in advance, you know. But we, I'm like, we have to start on whatever you know like we just have to keep making clothes and uh you know so we have re the real time to like develop everything uh the way we want to you know yeah. so um that's just it it's, it's become like a a year-round project <laughs> <laughs> and you have a really uh long-standing and, and great relationship uh, and collaboration with rupaul um for i think yeah. roughly 30 years at this point um somewhere in there and yes. and does he uh does he come to you with concepts that he wants to explore or at this point does he sort of trust you to to sort of come up with a whole line of outfits for him i mean i think it's like you know it's, we have a very unique relationship because you know it's like we can any of those things you know sometimes rue has something that rue definitely wants to do um but basically it's it's a relationship that's built on trust and it's kind of like a COVID model of being able to like operate on two different coasts with a, you know, just knowing what we, where we want to go, you know, it's like, we kind of feel together like, oh, you know, this was last season. Like, what do we want to do in this next season? That's going to be so much, you know, like make us all excited and happy again. So it, it is a great sort of, um, uh, I'm so proud of like this relationship that we do have this creative one. It's like, it's a very rare, um, a rare one where you trust each other so much because you're always on the same page, you know. Is there ever any kind of concept that you you bring to Rue that he just says, no, absolutely not, I'm not wearing that? Oh God, no, never. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're not there at all, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like you only, you know, get to keep that kind of relationship if you're, you know, deliver, if it's like, it makes sense, you know what I mean? Um, and uh, it just uh, it just works, you know. Like I said, we just uh, we we have similar uh, likes and ideas, and like um, sort of ideas for the future and the present. And it's just like it just works, you know. It's like I have a few relationships with some clients where that trust is there, but it is very unique, you know, and value highly. I value it so much. Yeah. I'm curious when when you look at a, a whole season of Drag Race. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I, I notice like there's certain elements that po keep popping up in in different dresses. Like recently, Rue has been like on this season has been showing a lot of leg, which she didn't used to do, um, which is uh, great and fun to see. And do you think of this season with like an arc or a, a sort of theme to it at all? Uh, sometimes, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you can have a very loose sort of narrative of like how you want something to go. Um, but it's a very instinctual also kind of show for Rue where like Rue just might all of a sudden have um, sort of like a passion to pull something I made for her in the 90s from like an early, the early BH1 show and just like, you know, like, bring it back, you know, because it's like, I love Rue because, you know, Rue was like, when am I ever going to wear this again? <laughs> you know, um, but that is actually how the legs got back on. It's like Rue pulled out this, um, actually one of my favorite outfits of all time. It was like a pink, hot pink and black zebra, sort of like uh, Flintstones, pebbles, kind of the shortest maybe look I've ever made for Rue. And she wore that, you know, what is it, like 20 some years later. And all of a sudden the legs were out again. And it was, you know, like it's it's been for the past uh, few seasons where it's like, oh, we can show, like, you want this again, you know? Yeah. I mean, cause for a long time, Rue was just like, I just want like long, sleek and like, and we did, you know, adhere to that, but uh, you know, we kind of pushed it along and try to do something a little sheer where you 
see the ghost of a leg and then it just mm -hmm. sort of evolves into like leg. So now there's like nothing. We can show almost anything <laughs> now. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, one of the most unique designs for, for this season, to me anyway, actually happened in her look for the first episode where it's sort of this like silver base and then there's these um, like ruffles that are kind of like iridescent purple almost over it. And it's uh, it's just a very cool fabric that uh, I had never seen put together. Wait, where did that... Well, I mean, like I said, I, I have so many, like, <laughs> I can't even think of what episode one was because I'm already deep into like All Stars 8 right now. You know? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no spoilers for, for future All Stars 8, but um, it, so it has uh, the, the um, sort of lip sync extravaganza going into the pork chop lounge uh, of this. <laughs> It was big oh, and silver and sparkly. Was that the one? Yeah, or? and there's there's just like all these ruffles that come over it with a sort of like purple iridescent fabric, and I'm just oh, wondering okay. where yeah. yes. where the concept for like putting the those color combinations came to because it was very unique. I mean, let's just say like me and my studio, it's like you know, like we have to come up with I don't know how many numbers of dresses gowns a year, so it's like. You know, we're just constantly thinking, uh, you know, like discovering fabrics and creating concepts around them. And then we literally, you know, snatch them off the board <laughs> and start putting together seasons. You know, it's like, we're just, we have so many things like in the waiting already, you know? So I don't actually really know where that one just came in, but it's like each time we sort of like review fabric, um, uh, fabric swatching, um, it's like each one already becomes a look and we know what we want to do with it, but it could sit there for a year. It could sit there for two years, you know? Uh, it, it might not ever get made, you know, but we always have these things because we know that, you know, we just, we constantly have to keep creating new idea, new, like new stuff. And it's like, you know, it's, it's the fun part, but it's also, you know, if they keep, the more shows you add, it's just, it gets, it gets a little wild, you know, but uh, we love it, so. At this point, because you've been doing it so long, have created so much, is it then like, how do you sort of keep it fresh for yourself uh, in this sort of constant process of making gowns? Are you trying to reach out and, and use more challenging fabrics or use things in a different way? Uh, well, absolutely. You know, it's just, uh, it's just like as if you have um, a, a, a label, a collection and a brand, it's like, you know, it's not like we're gonna do the same, you know, hourglass gown I mean we do that as a class that's a classic rule and we will always make that sequin body hugging you know like gown it's always that but you can't just keep making that so it's like you're always trying to challenge yourself in the way that fashion is because it's it's like uh you know we we film these shows like a year in advance so it's like not only do you have to think of it you know as in like what's coming up right now but also you know what is going to look like what are you going to want to look at in a year from now and think, wow, that's a fresh idea. That's fresh fabric. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's that kind of uh, projection, you know? Yeah. Um, Another really cool thing about this season uh, is in the grand finale, Rue performs a number, which she hasn't done on the show in, in a bit. Um, oh my gosh. I know. And so what, that's like a different type of costume for her because she has to be able to to move in it. And it's this great big, uh, you know, grand cape of tool. Uh, what the was this? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what was the sort of concept behind it? What were the conversations uh, in terms of what she well, said she needed? Well, the thing is, it's like, you know, I had been planning um, with Swarovski Crystal, the, the neon gown that Rue wore the entire, uh, for the most of the show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just was like, during the whole, you know, um, Zoom finale of last year, I just was like, oh God, there, I'm just hoping and praying that we'd get to do something live next year. And then I, you know, I started planning something and like, what would be the most vibrant uh, thing we could possibly do, which was, I was like, oh, you know, hundreds and thousands of uh, neon Swarovski crystals, like glittering all over Ruse. I was like, this is what we need to do. Um, but it was really like at the last moment that I, I was like, Oh, there's a performance. They were like, "Oh, Ruth's doing a performance." I'm like, "It was so casual." I was like, "What's what's what's what is she wearing?" <laughs> what's Ruth? I was like, "Ruth, what are you wearing?" It's like, "I'm just wearing the gown." I'm like, "Oh my god, no! We have to do an out another outfit like right now." So it's like I really just had a few weeks like to like really pull together the outfit. But I was like, you know, art. I was like, "Wow, there's backup dancers and choreography 
you know, it just, it was not as challenging as I thought. You know, I was imagining, you know, Diana Ross's, uh, you know, Vegas show where coming down the stairs and being lifted up by eight men, you know, like, so it wasn't that restrictive as far as the outfit goes, but you know, bathing suit. It's like <laughs> completely covered in Swarovski crystal, you know, like, I was like, that's, that's all you really need to wear, you know? With a big reveal, of course. Yeah. Of course, you have to have a reveal. Yes. <clears throat> uh, you mentioned, you know, last season uh, in 12, they had to do the finale virtually. Thankfully, we didn't have to go that route this year and they got to be on an actual stage. Um, but the season did have to film, you know, during the pandemic with precautions in place. How yeah. did that uh, affect your work at all? Um, not, not, not my, not my work, you know, it's not, not for me. It didn't have an effect, but I think it had an effect on, you know, it was a little, you know, like the distancing on such a loving show, you know, where everyone's hugging everybody. It's like, it's a little, you know, it is a little bit of a damper, but you know what I mean? It's like, you know, thank God it was, it was able to actually be filmed, you know, um, uh, which is a miracle. And it was so much fun in the end, you know, like it was a really great season. Yeah. What, what we do for entertainment, filming during pandemics. Oh, oh. oh uh, wait. <laughs> oh, there, I disappeared. Hi. <laughs> oh, you're good. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about your background because you've designed for so many uh, different styles of performers and uh, oh, yeah. like Cirque du Soleil, you've done uh, yeah. Lady Gaga's tour, you were a designer for Gwen Stefani's Lamb line. Yeah. Do you ever look at, you know, stuff that is so different from maybe what would appear on Drag Race and, and think like, oh, I want to pull something from my past, like this thing from Cirque du Soleil would like work so great on this oh, stage. You know, like when when you're in that creative world and so I'm like everything, you know, it, uh, influences another thing, you know? So the, you better believe like some, you know, like fabric, um, textile developments that I would do at uh, Cirque du Soleil, you know, would wind up on Drag Race and vice versa, you know. Um, every every step is like a learning situation and you just keep using all that inspiration uh, to like really, really perfect it, you know. It's, it's just how that happens, you know. Um, for like Katy Perry's uh, last tour, I designed her opening robot outfit, you know, and it's kind of like this, these, um, I've been doing that for maybe like 10, 12 years, like uh, creating these uh, kind of armors, but it wasn't until hers came out that I was like, ah, this is like, this is it. This is like the pinnacle. This is it. Like, I finally feel like the most satisfied with this concept, you know, and, you know, I still haven't, haven't done it since, you know, in a way. So, but that's kind of how it is. It's like, you know, you discover something and you're just not done with the full exploration yet. So it just feeds all of your other projects. Yeah. You're also in a very unique position because you have seen RuPaul from, you know, back in the 90s on the talk show, back when uh, she really was a sort of niche programming. Now through the beginnings of Drag Race to now where it's on VH1, it is a huge phenomenon that is at the center of pop culture. Did you ever imagine back in the 90s that it would be where it is right now, this huge oh my thing? God, absolutely not, you know, it's like, I mean, I just thought, you know, back then, it's like, you know, RuPaul, it's like, you know, Versace, you know, uh, Elton John, she's meeting with Elton, she's singing with Elton John, uh, she has her own talk show, she has a hit record, you know, I was like, this is it, you're like, you know, this is the heights of everything, it's like, who could ever imagine that it would be so, like, um, important to, uh, just people and reach so many people around the world. No, I, I don't think anybody really had that idea, you know, because it just grew with the way that um, we share information now. It just like grew so big um, uh, just because of the time we're in. And, you know, it's, I think it's, we're always surprised, <laughs> you know, <laughs> everything is a surprise, you know, to me, you know. And I should mention, uh, you know, along that journey for, for Drag Race, you have won three consecutive Emmy Awards for your yes. work as a costume designer. Um, uh, what does that sort of continued recognition to you mean to you to be honored by the um, Emmys? Uh, you know, I, it, it's actually, it's, it means more and more. Like, 
each time, each year, it's just sort of like the idea that you're you're even being nominated. It's like it's just starts to like you start to just really realize it's like everybody in my industry works so hard, you know, and it's like for your peers to say like, yeah, we all work hard, but you know, we really want to like celebrate the work that you've done. It's it's like it's such an honor. It's like, and like I said, it's just like, you know, I'm getting goosebumps right now because it just means you really know how much it means like uh, to, to feel like uh, singled out that way, you know, and to be a part of a group that are singled out. Um, so it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's one of those unbelievable things, uh, you know, that uh, when you feel like you're a part of a community of uh, other artists uh, that do like-minded things, think the same way, and um, I just, uh, it's, 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 it's really humbling, honestly, you know. Well, we'll hope that recognition continues for you and you get to <laughs> design many more uh, fabulous gowns for, for seasons of Drag Race. Uh, yeah, so, I'm, I see uh, an end to that, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's going strong. Yeah. So for everyone who's out there watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby and Zaldi. Thank you so much for talking Drag Race with me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.